All right, so here we are over on my website, danvega.dev. I have a users page. Uh, this was heavily inspired by Wes Boss's users page. I'm not sure if you guys have heard. I'm sure you've probably heard of Wes Boss at this point, uh, but he has a users page that kind of just walks through. He got a lot of questions of like, okay, what is your uh, Visual Studio Code setup? What plugins are you using? Uh, what equipment do you use to uh, on your desktop to, to kind of work every day? Uh, he has a backup strategy here. What do you do when you like record videos, camera, lighting, desktop, all that stuff? He would get a lot of those questions. So he decided to make a users pages to kind of answer that. So anytime anybody asks him like, what's your setup? You just points them to a users page. So I created something similar. Um, this needs to get updated a little bit. It's a little bit out of date at this point. But the idea is we're just talking about the things that uh, are prevalent in our day-to-day -day, uh, development lives. So what is this website? What are these, what are the, how do I set up my editor, my IDE? What is my desk setup? Uh, what are some tools that I like to use? What does my laptop look like? How do I set that up? So anything that you want to kind of express here, this is a great place to do this from. So how are we going to create this? Uh, we're going to go back over to our site. We're probably just going to copy in some content here, but this is just going to be another page. So again, uh, in our pages directory, we're just going to create a new file called uses.view. We're not going to really have any um, script tag in here. So I'm just going to copy this template over that I already have. And as you can see, we have our H1. Uh, it's going to be titled uses has some text in here, has a list in here for things about this website, and then some of the editor and terminal stuff. Uh, I do have an image in here, so this is going to be stored in the assets folder. So again, kind of uh, the two places I'm storing images are in assets images. Uh, so I don't have this one yet, so let's go ahead and copy that over. So let me copy and then paste. Great. Um, so that's where I'm storing any images that I have to reference within a view template. Um, and then in public slash images slash blog, that's where I'm referencing images within my markdown, which is within my blog posts. So two kind of places where I'm storing images at. Um, so that's that. Um, I have my users page. So let's go ahead and run our project, npm run dev, and see if this works. So let's go back over to localhost 3000. And I'm going to click on Uses, and there is my Uses page. So, so far, so good. We've pretty much done everything we need to do. We have a home page. We have the latest blog posts here. If you wanted to extend this, you could maybe create another section for latest projects and do the same thing. Maybe pull in uh, three of your projects. Uh, I'm just looking at this, and I notice there's no gap here, so let's fix that. Um, so on our home page where our blog posts are, gap is zero, not 10. That's why we have no gap. Um, but yeah, you may want to go ahead and add some latest uh, projects on here or whatever else you want to kind of do to make this your own. So we have our blog, we have our blog posts, we are listing them in descending order by date. Um, well, in this case, actually, no, we're not. So you could probably fix that as well. Uh, we have our projects that are getting hooked up to our GitHub projects. And we have our users page. So this is a really great start for a personal portfolio. The problem is it's only running on our local machine right now. So let's solve that next. Let's get this to production so we can show mom, uh, loved ones, dad, brothers, sisters, whoever we want. We can go ahead and say, hey, look at this domain name. I built this. Uh, and we did it here using Nuxt, Vue, Tailwind, and GraphQL. So let's move on to deploying this to production. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure all of our code has been committed and pushed to our repo. I see I have a bunch of stuff here. So uh, I've not been practicing good patterns here. I'm just going to commit everything. Uh, getting, oh, let's, let's take this time to have a little pun. Getting caught... So let's go ahead and commit that and push that, and we should be good to go. All right, once those changes have been committed, you want to head over to Nellify.com. If you don't have an account, sign up one for free. Uh, also, the project that we're going to push is not going to cost us any money. Uh, they have a whole bunch of really generous tier uh, free defaults. So check that out. So I have a bunch of existing sites. I'm going to add a new site. I'm going to import 
uh, an existing project from a Git repository. So we're going to talk to GitHub. Uh, I'm already authorized on here. You may have to authorize it. So we're going to say net ninja. And we should see our net ninja portfolio uh, repository. That's it. So when we come in here, the really nice thing is it's going to pick up all of the defaults for us. Uh, so we have uh, the main branch is what we're deploying. We are going to run npm run build. We're going to use the publish directory of dist. We're going to show advanced. Now we are going to create a new environment variable here. Uh, so what I want to do is create a variable. I'm going to call this GitHub token. And what I want you to do is paste in the value that you used in your .env file from earlier. I'm going to do that now and then click deploy site. All right, so once that's done, it's going to start building. You can click on this deploy to actually see what's happening here. So we're going to go through, see what happens, and see if we can't get this deployed. Now this is important. Now Nitro now uses ISR option to configure ISR behavior. This is where I would check the docs. You can set up some config for static uh, sites. So such as the blog section, we would probably want to set that up as static. Uh, you can go ahead and change that uh, behavior in there. So everything was deployed. Uh, we can go ahead and view it from our site overview. I want to talk about just renaming this, though. I'm going to rename this site details. You can cha change site name. So I may call this, my first one is Net Ninja Portfolio already. So I'm going to just say NN Portfolio and save this. And oh, that's already taken. Um, let's see, dbnn. So we'll save that. And now we have that as the name. Now we can just go ahead and open this link. And here is our site. So this is different from the one before, but everything looks the same. We have our latest blog post. We can go into our blog section. We can click on read more. We can see all the information for this. We could go into projects. And this is not working. So something is not getting pulled in for our environment variable. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go into uh, my site overview. And um, where are we with deploys? So I have my So I'm going to go to my site settings and go to environment variables. And why is that? Hmm. Let me just try this. This should trigger a redeploy once we change environment variables. I believe it does. Doesn't look like it does. Um, so we can come in here and just say clear cache and redeploy. All right, so let's go ahead and see if this works now. And huh, I wonder why that is, but uh, no big deal. So I think maybe there's a difference in the way you add environment variables from that first step to just adding it manually in the environment variables section. I'm not sure, but I remember having this issue somewhere else. So I'm not sure what caused that. But in any sense, we have our correct uh, token being used now. And there's our users page. So I think that's where we're going to end this. This was a fun little series to go through. Uh, I hope you learned a lot in this. Again, I want to reiterate from the beginning, one of the things that I really uh, am glad I did early on in my career was build a blog and get involved in the community and just uh, you know being able to kind of walk walk people through some of the pain points that I came across. So whether it's a blog or just a personal portfolio, this is a really good uh, place to be, a really good project to work on because you're heavily invested in it. It's something that you can now show off because it's in production, so you can tell other people about it, tell them to check it out. And I just had a lot of fun putting this together, and I hope you did too. I hope you learned a lot throughout this uh, a little series. If you have questions, please let us know. Be happy to answer them. And again, thank you for uh, going through this series with me. I'm your host, Dan Vega, and I hope to see you in another one. Thank you. Goodbye.
So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one mm -hmm.